Welcome back to the channel. If you love stargazing or just want to catch some amazing sights in the night sky, then July 2025 is packed with rare and beautiful astronomical events that you don't want to miss. Let's start with July 4. This is when Mercury will be at its greatest eastern elongation. That means it'll be at its farthest point from the sun in the evening sky. If you've never seen Mercury before, this is your best shot. Just wait about 30 minutes after sunset and look toward the western horizon. Mercury will be shining low in the sky. It won't be super bright like Venus, but you should be able to spot it if the skies are clear. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll have an even better view. And as a bonus, Mars will also be in the western sky around the same time, so you could catch both planets in one go. Now fast forward to July 10. That's the night of the full buck moon. It'll officially reach its peak at 4.37 p.m. Eastern Time, but you'll need to wait until after sunset to actually see it rise. Look toward the southeast, and you'll see this big bright moon coming up. The buck moon gets its name from the time of year when male deer or bucks grow their antlers. This name has been around for centuries, coming from old traditions and Native American cultures. It's always a beautiful full moon, perfect for photography or just a peaceful moment under the stars. On July 20, we've got something special for early risers. Just before sunrise, the moon will pass right in front of the Pleiades star cluster, also called the Seven Sisters. This is called an occultation. If you live in North or Central America, you'll get to see it. The moon will be a thin crescent, about 23% lit, which makes the stars in the Pleiades easier to see. One by one, the stars will seem to disappear behind the moon and then reappear on the other side. You don't even need a telescope to enjoy it. Though binoculars will definitely give you a better view, just make sure you find a spot with a clear view of the eastern horizon before the sun comes up. Then, on July 28, there's another occultation, but this one's a little trickier. The moon will pass in front of Mars, but it'll only be fully visible from Antarctica. Yeah, not exactly the easiest place to get to. But don't worry, if you're anywhere else, you'll still be able to see Mars and the moon really close together in the sky. This is what's called a conjunction. Even though the moon won't totally block Mars from view in most places, seeing the two so close together is still a pretty cool sight. July wraps up with one of the best meteor showers of the month, the Delta Aquarians. These meteors peak around July 30, and the best part is that the moon won't be too bright this year, so you'll have darker skies to enjoy the show. The Delta Aquarians are best seen from the southern hemisphere or lower parts of the northern hemisphere, like the southern USP. Try watching after midnight for the best chance to catch them. You could see 15 to 20 meteors per hour if you're in a dark area. And as a bonus, this shower overlaps with the start of the famous Perseids, which peak in August, so late July is like a warm-up for that. There's also a smaller meteor shower called the Pisces Austrinids, which peaks on July 28. It's not super active, only about 5 meteors per hour, but if you're already out watching the sky that night, you might catch a few extra streaks of light. These meteors come from a radiant point near the bright star Fomalhaut, which sits in the constellation Pisces Austrinus. So yeah, July 2025 is going to be a fantastic month for sky watchers. From planets and full moons to rare occultations and shooting stars, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Set your alarms, charge your cameras, and don't forget to look up.